And in the meantime, I see the first people are starting to join in for this webinar um, in partnership with Syracuse University's Whitman School of Management. Um, so, of course, it's really nice to see everyone joining us. And I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge everyone's, you know, um, uh, background. So please do pop in the chat where you are connecting from. We will be glad to, to know that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm really glad to be here with you uh, for this uh, webinar uh, that will be focused on the application process and, of course, student life and academic offering at the Whitman School of Management. Uh, here with us tonight is Shri. She's the Assistant Director for Recruitment um, for the Master's Programs. So I would like to really thank her for her presence here with us tonight. And um, just, you know, I'm really glad that, that she took the time for this um, presentation. Of course, uh, after the presentation, you will have the opportunity to ask all questions live um, by popping your questions in the Q&A box. And of course, we will go over those at the end of this event. In the meantime, I see that people are joining us from Nigeria. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And for those who are just connecting, welcome to this webinar in partnership with um, Syracuse U University's Whitman School of Management. So here with us tonight, as I mentioned, is Sri. She's the Assistant Director for Recruitment for the Master Programs at Syracuse. So, of course, um, I'm really glad to leave Sri the floor. And before I do that, I want to remind you all that uh, after uh, um, attending this event, you will have the chance to uh, request your certificate of attendance by Doc City. I will pop more uh, information in the chat um, later on in the event. Thank you so much for connecting, and I will now leave the floor to Sri. Well, thank you, Lavinia. Everyone, it's a pleasure and uh, an honor to um, have this session during some unprecedented turmoil in the world. So uh, I hope for the next hour, while we can stay mindful of what's happening um, around us, we can also be a little present and uh, recognize you know, human sacrifice, but then also human spirit. And, and uh, in, in that endeavor, try to motivate ourselves to do the best that we can and become the best that we can be. So um, having said that, it's, it's interesting to see some familiar faces uh, in, in the attendee list. I recognize some names, um, but they like to be in the background. They don't want to introduce themselves in the chat, but that's okay. There are a lot of students that I recognize from India. There are a couple others from uh, Canada and so uh, Nigeria, yes. So anyway, welcome to everyone. And I think if they have questions, you can post them in the Q&A um, section and we I will address them at the end. I try to put together a PowerPoint just so that it won't be me talking constantly. But let's see if I can do this correctly and share my screen correctly. Lavinia was trying to teach me for the whole practice session. I don't know how much she thinks I succeeded, but we'll I see. I have faith. I think we are good. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. And I start with the wrong screen. Okay. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we start with that. All right. So this is today's... Um, presentation and I wanted to start out with a video to showcase the orange spirits and I thought we could view this. So are you able to view the video now? Yes we can. Thank okay. you. Sri. Is sound audible or not? Mm. Go. Now it's better. It gives us permission to go beyond. We do. Potential is over. It's time to rise as one, to rise as orange. Okay, so let me cancel and go back after I close this so that you don't have any other distractions. So we're back to the screen. Yes, we yeah. are. Okay, perfect. So I wanted to 
start out with that little video just to help those who are obviously not able to visit campus at this time to get a sense of who we are as a university. You know, as you know, our color is orange and you probably have heard or seen hashtags uh, go orange, be orange, and now we have the new uh, spirit encased in rise as orange, right? What you're looking at here are some pictures of campus. We have a gorgeous campus, which um, today I think has quite a bit of snow on the ground, but the pathways are still clear. And here are some other generic life pictures on campus. Um, if you've visited the campus, you've probably walked down these pathways, but um, you're looking at the music school on the right, um, and then on the left is the Newhouse School of Communications and a bunch of other um, schools on campuses, life sciences, um, and then uh, College of uh, Engineering and you know, other, other buildings on campus. So overall, it's a gorgeous campus. We are very proud to uh, walk around our space and maintain the space and, you know, uh, celebrate uh, in whatever ways that we can, just having the good fortune and gratitude to be in this place, right? And of course, those of you who are interested in sports, I am the wrong person to be uh, talking about the screen, but I will put it up there anyway, just so you know that yes, we do have Syracuse uh, basketball and other football games, but uh, that's our mascot on the top left, uh, Otto, and uh, some other pictures just to showcase the orange spirit. And as prospective students, this is what you will potentially be embodying and also, embodying what it means to be an SU student uh, along with the values that come with being at SU. So this picture I specifically put up here because um, I've had students who come from countries where they have never experienced snow to always wonder whether they would be able to handle the climate change. And so this picture is a good example for you to know the buildings are climate controlled. Look at the student when it's snowing outside, sitting in a t-shirt, obviously you don't have to worry about being able to adjust. So I thought a visual would be better than uh, an amount of uh, verbal content that I could keep telling you. So I thought this would be a good representation. That's basically, that's all this picture serves the purpose. This is the Whitman School of Management, and this will be your home for the two years or 16 months um, or extended beyond two years if you choose to do an additional program when you come to campus, right? So the glass portion that you're looking at, that is actually the uh, Flom Hall where we host our uh, any celebratory events, any uh, like at orientation, that's where we will all be uh, waiting to greet you. Um, when we finish uh, convocation, we come back here for a celebration. And so that's, that's our main meeting space. And sometimes you will see the Dean sitting there at the table uh, with a little sign that says the Dean is in. So that will be his office for the next two hours and anybody, uh, any student who's walking in can go up to him and greet him and have a chat. Right, so we are we are a very open, friendly space, and and this is your building, and um, the third floor of this building is the graduate floor. Ivan, you are here in the uh, participant list. Um, you can potentially talk maybe later in the chat or throw in some comments about your visit when you came uh, to the building. So. Moving to the academic component, I wanted to address a few things because I know some of you in the audience here already have had interactions with either myself or uh, my other colleagues in regards to the programs that you are interested in applying for. You probably att uh, are attending this uh, session today just to clarify some last minute stuff before you submit your application or you have new questions. But Again, there are um, both specialized master's degrees offered at the Whitman School of Management, and we also have specializations within the MBA program offered at the Whitman School of Management, right? So the way I've indicated it is by listing all the specializations and then presenting whether there is an MS degree available and also a specialization within the MBA. 
the sections which are asterisked, that indicates that the program is STEM designated. Um, I do have to say that this PowerPoint should have been updated, my apologies. It's not just the MS program is STEM designated, the MBA program for those particular specializations is also STEM designated. So for example, business analytics, we have a STEM designated program with the master's degree, MS degree, as well as the MBA in business analytics is considered to be STEM designated as well. If you have questions about what STEM designation means, maybe we could address that. We have time in the Q&A towards the end. But this gives you a list of all the program offerings at Whitman. So I'm starting out with the MBA application checklist. If you have not contacted me or are not aware that you can reach out to one of uh, the members of the recruitment team to discuss the uh, requirements, your eligibility, or have a discussion about your candidacy, then towards the end of this PowerPoint, there will be a link for you to copy uh, with access to uh, my calendar and also my email address, and you can reach out to schedule that meeting. But in general, for the MBA program, this is our flagship program at the Whitman School, and we uh, look for people who have at least a year, two years of work experience before you start in this program. While it's not required, it's recommended. And it's, it's because this is a terminal professional degree. And if you have a lot more years of work experience, then you would potentially be available for what I've listed here as the GMAT or GRE exam waivers. So just go through one by one. There is an online application, my apologies. It's a pretty long application. It's eight pages long. So be careful when you are filling out the application. Take some time. Don't do it in a rush. There might be sections that you miss or content that you uh, don't utilize as well to represent your candidacy accurately or more competitively than you could if you have more time and you paid more attention. Uh, as Lavinia mentioned at the beginning, uh, Doc City is offering you the certificate of attendance, but from uh, Whitman's side, we are offering you application fee waiver codes for attending this session. So uh, you can email me and there is a separate uh, slide that gives you instructions on how you can request that code. So A, there's an online application, which is mandatory. You have to complete it. We don't take anything on paper. All your documents have to be uploaded online. There is an application essay. Please note, this is not a statement of purpose. This is also not a personal statement, which means there is a specific question that is listed there and you would do well to answer the question to the best of your ability. So instead of just writing a generic statement about your life, answering specifically to the question by drawing on uh, some references from the website regarding the program as well will help you. And if you have questions about that, throw them in the Q&A box and we'll address that at the end. Two letters of recommendation are required, although the application portal has space to take three. So if you submit three, the first two that arrive and the rest of your application materials have also arrived and we will just consider your application to be complete. The, the other schools on campus who use the same application portal might require three recommendation uh, letters, but for Whitman, we only require two. And some questions that I usually get when talking about letters of recommendation is, um, one of them is my recommender does not have an official letterhead because they've been working from home and the letterhead is not available or what have you. So if you're submitting your unofficial doc, I mean, I'm sorry, you're submitting your uh, letter of recommendation, you can create a letterhead digitally right, on Word document. If your recommender is not able to do that, there are two ways. They can write their letter, use their signature, upload it. And um, the other option is the system allows them to use a preset template that is already available. And if they want to check the boxes in there and uh, attach their letter to that, they can do that. It doesn't have to be on, on an official letterhead. 
but um, it has to be uploaded via the link that they receive once their information has been input into the system, okay? The other question I receive is, does my um, recommender have to be someone with a very high designation in the company? Well, I mean, as an example, uh, we all know Jeff Bezos runs Amazon. Uh, if I'm working at Amazon, obviously I can't get him to write a letter for me if I'm not working directly with him, right? So by the same token, here I am at the Whitman School of Management. If I'm not directly working with the dean, I don't think it would make sense to ask the dean to give me a letter of recommendation for my next job, right? And I don't think he would give me one too. He'll say like, why are you looking for another job in the first place? Go back and do another webinar. But <laughs> jokes aside, if, if the point being, if you're not working directly with the um, person who is supervising your work or is a project head, they don't have enough information then to write about your competencies. And the purpose of getting the letter of recommendation is to understand your competencies from a third party perspective. Does that make sense? So you want to find somebody um, for MBA, like I said, we would prefer people with uh, work experience. So you want to find somebody who is uh, not your colleague at the same level, because obviously they don't have supervisory authority over you, so they cannot give you um, uh, an evaluation of your performance, but they can only comment at a peer level. So those are not the letters we're looking for. We want somebody who's at a senior level, supervisory level, and they are um, evaluating your work and your um evaluating your candidacy in a way to say whether you would be a good fit for the program or not. So I see some people raising hands. Is this a problem or is it like you have questions? If you have questions, just throw them in the Q&A box. Yes, I confirm. They probably have questions. And of course, if you do have, uh, just write them in the Q&A box and we will answer those at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, okay. So. Um, Transcripts, we need unofficial copies of your transcripts and um, the English proficiency exam. So unless you contact us and you are specifically informed, other than looking on the website and you don't fall into any of those countries that are listed there, but your native language happens to be English or you studied in the US um, or in an English speaking country, or in cases like in Canada, it has to be an English speaking province or county, then you do have to submit the English proficiency score report, right? So for instance, a lot of students from India write in and say, my education was all in English all through my educational career. Do I still need to submit a score report? Short answer, yes. Uh, long answer, it is policy. <laughs> so yes, you have to submit the official score report. We don't accept the unofficial. You can upload the unofficial, but your application will not be considered complete or go in for a review just based on the unofficial score report, okay? So fall 22 application deadlines, March 15th coming up, and the next one would be April 15th. We haven't, um, at this point, there is no talk of an extension. If there is potentially the possibility for extending uh, beyond April 15th, it will be listed on the website. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning this is in 2020, we did extend given the nature of the pandemic, you know, causing a lot of uh, difficulty for students to submit things on time. So I don't foresee that happening, but again, keep watching the website. But if you're attending this webinar today, I don't see why you should wait beyond April 15th, okay? So this is about the MBA application checklist. I'm gonna move quickly to the MS application checklist. Again, things are similar over here with the online application. The difference with the MS um, entrepreneurship degree is that you also are required to submit a business plan, which is an additional essay, right? And um, it's a $75 application fee. Again, fee waiver codes are available. Similar thing, you have an application essay. The second added thing, which is different here compared to the MBA application is that you have a five minute video component. This raises a lot of questions for students, mostly filled with unnecessary anxiety. So don't have anxiety, first of all. Second of all, 
you will see the questions ahead of time. You can prepare, you can rehearse your responses, but don't write them down and keep them in front of you and read them. We can tell, right? Don't do that. We want you to answer naturally um, in reading the question and then uh, listing out your response. Also remember when you're recording your video, you will potentially experience technical glitches with that uh, video player. Don't launch the player and then stop in between because you thought you didn't record your first response correctly and you want to go back. System will not allow you to do that. And then you will just spiral into, you know, anxiety. Don't do that. Just take a deep breath, read out the first question, give out your answer, go to the next question, give out your answer. Um, third question, record your answer, say thank you, go orange be done, okay? Don't try to play it back after recording, not from the application player, that is. Don't, don't launch it. Once you launch it on the application and you record your responses there, don't try to mess with that content again. If you want to listen to how your video went and how well you did it, record yourself on another device simultaneously, at the same, you know, so, so that you can review the recording on that device, not from the application launch pad right? Because that system is glitchy. Sometimes when you play it back, you will potentially not hear any audio and then you will freak out. Um, you will also maybe experience some glitches where it doesn't play back for you because it's, it's just meant to do it all in one shot and then you just submit the rest of your app with it, okay? So don't get caught into that. Don't go into that spiral of anxiety. Um, if for whatever reason, whatever you try, nothing works, then just know that we don't automatically withdraw your application because we didn't see it. We will contact you to find out, is there another way for you to submit the recording? And we'll give you an option on what that is. So don't send panic messages to say, I could have recorded this and like, you know, I don't want my application to be withdrawn and don't do this. And I'm really interested in witness. Okay, calm down. Let's bring the anxiety down. Don't panic. We don't automatically withdraw you. There will be communication to inquire, were you not able to record the video? Can you submit it in a different way? And that instruction will be given to you, okay? Um, GMAT and GRE exam. For fall 22, we have made the test optional. If you want to submit the test scores, they have to be official score reports. If you do not want to, then the test is optional. So you can review the application checklist on the website to try and understand um, what you should be doing in terms of submitting the score or not and other instructions. So I'm just trying to check the time to stay on time here. Um, and then you can choose to submit your official score report or you could choose to uh, have your candidacy reviewed, your application reviewed without a score report, okay? Unofficial copies of your transcripts again and then the English proficiency exam, the same um, thing as the MBA, official score reports for those who do not qualify for a waiver. And the only time you would qualify for a TOEFL waiver is if you are um, able to demonstrate that you went to school here in the U.S. or in another English-speaking country for at least three years, or a combination of you lived and studied here for three years, or the third option, native language, is, um, is English. Okay, so same deadlines as well. I put this slide in there because even though this is not specific to whether um, you have to do something in the application. Over 90% of students are awarded a scholarship, but know that your entire candidacy is taken into account, which means don't submit a shoddy application and wonder how that's going to impact your admission status, right? So put together well-crafted application you don't have to submit any additional paperwork or essays or documents in order to request the scholarship. This is automatic consideration for the MS programs as well as the MBA programs. So once we receive your application materials and they are considered, the application is considered to be complete. So I'm gonna go back to the previous slide for a second. 
when I say an application is complete, it has to be all of these components that are listed on this page, along with, I'm missing one document on here, which I did not notice until now. There is also a resume that you have to submit, both for the MBA and the MS programs. So my apologies, the resume is not shown on this slide, but that is also required. You have to upload a one-page business resume. So once you we receive all of your documentation uh, with the app, along with the online application, that's when it's considered to be complete. Okay, so if you're missing even one aspect of this, your application is not considered to be complete. It will not move to committee for review. There is nothing that you have to do with regard to scholarship. It is automatic consideration. Once your application is received, it is, it is considered to be complete. It will be sent to committee for review. When committee reviews, they review for admission into the program, as well as merit scholarship that they can award you. Okay, so when you receive your offer letter, you will get information about both. Now, keep in mind, it's already set into the system. So you might receive the offer of admission on day one and then the scholarship information day two. Don't panic again and say, I only got the offer of admission. I did not get any scholarship. Wait for another day or two. If it's a weekend, then please wait through the weekend and then contact us after, okay? So. Fee waiver codes. Those of you who are attending this session before you submit the application, because I know there might be a couple of you over here who are attending the session, even though you've already submitted the application. So you will be able to request the code because you attended this webinar. It's not going to be sent automatically just because you attended the webinar. If I don't receive an email from you referencing this particular webinar title and date, and you don't indicate your program of interest, I will not automatically send you a code just because I received your information, right? So I need to know that you are actually applying for Fall 22. Please indicate your program. I'm interested in applying for MS in Finance, MS in Business Analytics, and MBA, whichever program is of interest. Keep in mind the application fee waiver codes are only eligible for Whitman programs. You, might, you may want to apply to a different program on campus at Syracuse University. Our code is not going to work for that, okay? So send me the question, uh, I'm sorry, send me the information and then I can send you a code separately that you can use. If you're going to apply to two programs at Whitman, you will get one code to use towards one program and the other program, you would have to pay for it. So you might want to take some time to think about which program might be suitable for you before you actually um, decide and request the code. If you want to schedule a meeting um, to discuss your candidacy, you can do that using that same email address, but also the calendar information. Now this page I put up here so that you know what your um, important links are for the different programs on uh, at Whitman that are offered. So as you can see, everything is whitman.syr.edu slash whichever is the program information that you want, the short form of the program name. But I would encourage you to look through the instructions uh, on the application, on the ad admissions tab when you go onto these pages and then specifically review the application checklist because all the details are in there. Contact information, and that's the link to my calendar. So this calendly.com slash my name, I know it's pretty long, but um, if you're not able to remember this, I know Lavinia said there will be a recording that will be sent to you, right? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so um, you can re review, but if you are not able to remember it right now, I will also throw this in the chat box and you can, you know, when I'm answering the questions, because there are about 11 questions, um, you can, you know, copy and paste this. This gives you direct access to my calendar. Please don't schedule a meeting right after this webinar. I haven't updated my calendar. <laughs> I just discovered I have a couple of uh, recruitment events. I have one tomorrow and uh, towards the weekend. So give me uh, like 24 hours before you try to schedule a meeting so that my calendar is updated. Okay, so you'll be able to see what time you can schedule a meeting and um, it will give you instructions on how to request the meeting slot and also what you need to do in order to receive the meeting link. 
please keep in mind, it will say I need a resume 24 hours prior to the meeting. If I don't receive the resume, I will automatically cancel the meeting. So I cannot evaluate candidacy or address any other questions unless I actually see what you are, what your background is, educational and professional background. But also we need to determine uh, degree equivalency in cases where the degree is only a three-year degree undergraduate, we need to evaluate that. So I need to see all of that information on your resume. So please don't uh, take that lightly. Do send me a resume when you schedule the meeting and then you will get a meeting like after. Okay. So I'm gonna stop here and then go into the Q&A because it looks like people are getting a little antsy about this. Yes, we do have quite a bit of questions and I know that um, that's great for, for everyone involved. So please keep them coming. So if there's anything we can help you with, uh, just write your question in the Q&A box and we will do our best to answer them all. I will start with the one question that we got in the chat. So um, they are looking for a master in finance and they will complete their um, third year of bachelor's in investment management. And they are from India. They are asking if applications for 2023 are open. So, so this application um, webinar is for fall 22. And like I said, March 15th and April 15th are deadlines for our fall 22. So for fall 23, you still have time, but your important piece, um, the student's name, I don't get the full name here. Along, along yes, car? Yes, that's along car, yes. Yeah. So um, you need to be careful about your degree equivalency if you're applying to Whitman School of Management. With three years of undergraduate, you would not qualify to apply for our master's degree program. So go to the MSN Finance application checklist and understand more as to what you need to do. Thank you so much, Tree. So mm -hmm. I will now head to the Q&A box. Um, we have one applicant asking uh, how they can apply to the MBA um, at Syracuse University's Whitman School of Management and what are the requirements to apply for the MBA? So that was what we went through the application checklist for the uh, MBA program. And so all of the documents that are listed on the application checklist um, and also visit the page. So that will then give you an understanding of all the details that you need to submit and provide. And then the, once you've reviewed the website, then you can schedule a meeting with me or request a meeting with one of my teammates if I'm not available and we can um, evaluate your particular candidacy. But if we need to put up the put up the are you able to see this? You're not able to see this, right? Not yet. Yeah, because I'm not sharing my screen. That's why. Let's see. So if we there we go. So this is the application checklist. So all of these, along with a business resume, um, have to be provided and included. So this is also available on the website, so you can uh, review that. So. Thank you so much, Shree. Mm -hmm. And of course, I want to remind all participants that you will get a recording of the events. And so all the information that is listed in the slides, you will have available so don't worry about missing any um any deadline or any information of relevance i will go to the next question now and uh participant is asking if the h john riley dual engineering mba degree program is the same um as far as the application is concerned as the general mba one yes so um for those of uh, our students who are doing the uh, three plus two Riley dual engineering MBA. Yes, you would complete the MBA application on the website. So that would be this online application. Don't go in on the application portal looking for something specific to the um, Riley uh, application. You won't find one. So it's at the back end that we will match it with when you indicate that you're currently pursuing your 
undergraduate degree at Syracuse University in the College of Engineering. We will match it at the back end that you are a three plus two engineering uh, MBA candidate. And so you would complete all of this for you. Uh, the GMAT exam is not optional. So you will be also submitting a GMAT or a GRE official score report. So, and, and again, same, same offer to you guys as well. If you have questions, feel free to reach out and we can schedule a meeting and have a discussion. Thank you so much, Sri. So you mentioned this in passing, but uh, someone is, is asking how many years uh, do the MBA programs usually have as a schedule? It's, it's a two-year program. It's a two-year in-person, on-campus, in-residence. I mean, I'm trying to cover all ways of saying that it's a <laughs> yes. program because these days with you know hybrid opportunities available, it's, it's a little confusing. But yes, it's a two-year on-campus, in-person uh, at Syracuse. Uh, program uh, and it uh, takes 54 credits to complete and you have um, the specializations that I referenced here these are the specializations that are available within the MBA. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much Sri. So to go to the next question a participant is asking if by having the um, three year of work experience in marketing and analytics, um, and they are interesting in masters uh, in marketing um, and not having a GMAT score, can they still apply to this program? Oh, you have to love students. <laughs> you gotta find a way. <laughs> So this, this is where, uh, again, I want to reiterate that although information, I know you don't have the recording with you yet, but it's, it's very interesting to me that always the test score is the most anxiety filled uh, question. But um, no, if you want to apply for any of the MS programs for fall 22, we have gone test optional. So if you want to review the particular application checklist for MS and marketing, then you will benefit from reviewing the entire content. And I think, Lavina, I'm actually going to do something different here. I am going to pull up an example of an application checklist. That's so great. That know where to go, what to do. And I'm just going to walk you through it because this seems like a major. It's, and, and it's like, it's not just students at like, you know, a webinar session, it's even like those I meet in person or get on email, they seem to be very, very concerned about um, certain things about the application. So is everybody able to see the website? Yes. Yeah. So you want to go here under programs and academics, then you go under MS experience, then you choose whichever is your MS program that you're interested in. Don't go to online business master's degrees if you want to apply to a full-time program. So as an example, whoever was asking the question just now mentioned MS and marketing. So we'll go into MS and marketing. In here, there is information about the curriculum. There is information about the admissions, program costs, financial aid. Everything is available on this website. So please take a moment to review this thoroughly. Why do I say that? Because when you go into admissions, you will see information about admission requirements, such as your degrees, work experience, test, all of that. But then there is something called the application checklist. And this is what I've been referencing throughout this webinar. Step-by-step -step instructions for applying, okay? So when you go in here, it talks about, okay, what should you do about your transcripts? If your transcript does not um, if, if it's not a copy in English, then we do need an English translation, right? Then if your degree is not equivalent to a U.S. bachelor's degree, it's not a four-year degree, then what do you need to do? So all of the details are provided here. Two letters of recommendation. We need a resume, GMAT or GRE, optional for the 2022 admission cycle, okay? So look through all of this. I know it's long, but it's for your benefit. Most, if not all, of your generic questions regarding the MS application are available here. The same thing is for the MBA. If you go into the MBA experience, full-time MBA, 
and then you do the same thing with admissions. It brings you back to the page that is my system wants to work right now, right here, and brings you back to the application checklist and takes you through um, the application checklist. Okay, so I just wanted to show that so that um, people can review that. Thank you so much, Sri. In the meantime, we have gotten some more questions. So, of course, um, while we are on the subject of certifications, somebody is asking if there is um, any chance that the Duolingo score is considered as, a, as an alternative. Yes, as, as I indicated um, on the screen earlier, we accept TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, PT, Academic. Um, and then that reminds me. So in the application itself, you will not see an, a space to input your Duolingo score. So again, there is an optional text box. <laughs> it's not on the same page as the scores, but there is an optional text box. It's optional. If you want to input some information, you can. So you can use that text box to say, I am submitting an official score report from Duolingo. And you can indicate your score. You can upload your unofficial score report as an added uh, confirmation. But we will wait then to look for the official score report. But you can indicate in there. So just because you don't see a space to you know, write your score, like TOEFL or IELTS, you don't think that you know it's not going to be valid or uh, used. So again, you can use the optional text box to indicate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tree. So we have a very interesting question, I think. Somebody is asking if they can apply to two different programs offered by Syracuse, uh, may or may not be from the same college. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's possible. If you are applying to any programs, graduate program at Whitman, then like I said, you're eligible to request an official um, application fee waiver code that will be utilized for our program. If you want to apply to another program on campus, then you have to contact that particular school about their application requirements. And yes, you can submit an application to that program as well. That sounds great. While we are on the subject of uh, application waiver codes, somebody is asking if the code is uh, standing valid for all courses at Syracuse. No, because like I just said, that is for only our graduate programs at Whitman. So it will not be applicable for other programs at Syracuse. Thank you so much, Sri. So um, I see several questions about the scholarships at Syracuse. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you can maybe give us um, an overview really of these scholarships and maybe mention if um, you offer full scholarships. Um, in very rare cases, but only for the full-time MBA. Um, there have been rare cases of where a student has received a full scholarship. So typically our scholarships are merit-based. So that's why I keep harping again and again on submit a strong, competitive, compelling candidacy. And so you want to take some time to craft your application, not just be in a rush to like, you know, put together something and just send it. Um, if you want to schedule meetings with myself or my teammates to go over, get a profile evaluation or clarify certain things. We don't do handholding, but we give you enough guidance that you can at least um, go back and look at where your application can be strengthened. For instance, I know students have reached out to me and said like, here's a resume I've submitted. Um, I would like to apply for XYZ program. And if the resume is very scant because the candidate was not aware how to put it together, and therefore did not list a lot of their um, certifications or accomplishments that they should have put on the resume because they're not familiar with the style, then we provide a resume template as a reference and say, go back and rework your resume to then demonstrate, showcase your competency. So we're happy to do things like that, but also keep in mind with like, you know, capacity and volume. So it's not multiple meetings just to go back and say, is this okay? Is this okay? It's not about that. It's more about getting a generic understanding of where you're at in how you're demonstrating your candidacy that would be considered to be compelling. So another way to do that would probably be get all your questions ready 
and put them in an email, schedule a meeting, and then say, these are all my questions. So if I see the questions ahead of time, at least I can prepare, right? To see what are the ones that I can address. And if they are quick links that I can provide you with, I can do that. But if they are specific to your particular profile and candidacy evaluation, then we can address that at the meeting and not waste time that you've scheduled and put aside because with time zone difference, you know, that affects it as well, right? People are staying up late night to have these meetings. And so it's, it's useful to just get organized a little bit and then just clarify everything. Thank you so much, Tree. So I see we have some more questions in the chat, actually. Um, mm -hmm. A participant is asking how much work experience is recommended for a master in business ana analytics. We don't require um, work experience for the specialized master's programs. They are designed to accommodate people who come into the program with zero work experience. Having said that, if you have maybe a year or two years, it's still okay for you to apply. If you have more than five years of work experience, then you might want to schedule a meeting to discuss whether an MBA in business analytics is a better option or whether you actually want to go in for an MS in business analytics. And then depending on your individual evaluation, we could offer some suggestions. That's great news. Thank you so much, Sri. So a participant is asking actually how diverse is the student population at Whitman and what percentage of students comes from Africa? Oh, well, this year we're seeing a lot of interest <laughs> from Nigeria, I should say. And let me see, um, Benga is here. He's going to be one of my applicants, prospective. Um, I'm looking through the names over here to see Jared has already applied. Hello, Jared. And then um, there were quite a few. So there, there, we have two students from Nigeria this year in the MBA program. We've had a student from Cameroon, I think, in uh, 2019 or 2020. I could be wrong on the years, but uh, this was an MS student, a uh, specialized master's degree student, I believe, in accounting. We've had, we have another student of uh, Nigerian and Ghanaian origin, but she's a US citizen. She's currently in the second year MBA program. There, so there is a lot of interest. We haven't actually had the opportunity to travel in person to uh, Africa prior to the pandemic, but we are seeing a lot more ways in which to reach out to um, prospective candidates through virtual engagement. So, and, and Doc City of course is helping us with that as well. So hopefully uh, this webinar has been useful for you all and you will help spread the word. So it's it's pretty much by word of mouth. So it's 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 increasing. I want to say it's it's uh, it's not a steady number that only states that this is the only region of interest, but it's increasing. And so we would like to keep that momentum going. Fingers crossed. So a participant is asking if they are going to graduate uh, in July, can they still apply for uh, this academic year? So if you're going to be graduating in July, that's a good question. Um, it depends on where you are from. And is that Michelle? He's from Italy. Yeah. Italy. Okay. Michele. Michele. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, if you're graduating in July, so you want to apply by April 15th, but you want to show us your transcript with the last set of coursework that you're doing, that is going to potentially show that you are um, on route to graduation. Now, why do I say this? Because some, in some cases, your academic coursework is done, you have to submit a thesis, and that's why you're waiting to graduate in July. But if you actually physically have to attend classes until July, then you will not be able to apply for this year, for fall 22. And you would have to think about applying for fall 23, unless you're applying for accounting, which then you can start the program in the spring of 2023. But that's that's the distinction. So if, if it's a very specific uh, profile evaluation, I would invite you to schedule a meeting with me um, and then we can go over your details and your particular situation. But um, generic response would be no, because in July students are doing 
incoming students are doing the career center assignments and getting ready with their visas and you know trying to get here so thank you so much for clarifying that Shri. so we have quite a lot of questions left um i will do my best to skim through all of them and see which are the most relevant ones so a participant is asking if it's possible to uh the differments i'm not sure what they mean <laughs> the enrollment defer, process okay. defer okay yeah. the enrollment process if on said year the person in question is still having some work or condition that prevents him or her to enroll yes so one but but under certain preconditions so you have to you can apply to the program you get accepted you're admitted into the program you have to submit your financial documents have the financial documents approved you should have paid a confirmation deposit of $500 before you can choose to defer to next, next year because of extenuating circumstances, personal circumstances, like for instance, during the pandemic, someone wasn't able to travel because the restrictions hadn't been lifted in their country. And so yes, they chose to defer, that's possible. But if you don't pay the confirmation deposit, because you've not submitted the financial documents or you have submitted the documents and you're still in two minds and you are not paying the confirmation deposit, we cannot hold the seat for you. So without that deposit, you cannot defer. You would just be able to reactivate your application the following year, you would withdraw and then you would request to reactivate the following year. Um, but yeah, the seat will not be held for you unless we have assurance that you're actually going to come back to us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sri. So actually, Michele uh, has come back to us with the, with the follow-up question. He asks, so if uh, considering all that has been discussed, he is supposed to um, consider up applying uh, next year? Yes. Okay. Or so, get a meeting with me and have an individual discussion about your particular profile, send me your transcripts, send me your resume, and find a time on my calendar, and we can talk about your particular program of interest and your particular situation. Absolutely, and I do want to mention that in the uh, in the email with the re recording of the event, you will get uh, some uh, additional information on how to reach out to Shri, and of course, uh, you will have an email address to um, to write to if you have any questions left that we won't cover during this Q and A session. So to go forward with the questions, um, somebody is asking if can you please repeat how to submit a letter of reference. Um, that is not available on letterhead. Mm. Okay. okay, so um, if, if the official letterhead is not available, I mean, I'm sure you're all tech savvy enough to know you can create your own personal letterheads, right? So you can, you can have your recommender create one, or you can create one for them and give it to them, send it to them as an attachment, and they can use that. But um, they can write out the letter in on a regular Word document uh, and maybe turn it into a PDF and upload the PDF. Or they can, when their information is provided in the application portal, the, the portal will send them a link. When they click on that link, it will open up a template for them that you won't be able to see as a student um, because you shouldn't be putting your information as a recommender too, right? So you won't be able to see it, but they will be able to see it. It's a template that they can go and do a checkbox on and um, respond to the prompts. There's prompts like, um, what? don't quote me on this, but there might be something like, well, in your opinion, how do you rate the candidate on their creativity or um, initiative? and uh, competency and, you know, so they can choose like top 10%, uh, next 10%, 20%, whatever it is. So they can go put an Xbox in there. And, and so the template will then record the responses. Thank you so much, Sri. So we have uh, some more questions. Um, I want to ask you if uh, students from Nigeria and in general students from Nigeria who have been studying in English can qualify for the English proficiency test waiver yes okay mm -hmm. that's great 
So let's go to the next question. Um, they are asking how they can get the fee waiver code. I'm pretty sure we mentioned that, but <laughs> if you talk <laughs> to that again. <laughs> uh, you will get the recording. And so you can follow what's on the recording, but here it is. Okay. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. No, no, no. Okay. I'm on the wrong page. Here, I'm gonna put it up one more time. There we go. <laughs> this is how you can request the code. They're not sent automatically. You email me, reference this webinar and title and date, indicate your program of interest when you request the code. If you've already received a code from me, do not request the second code, please. Or if you've received a code from any of my colleagues at Whitman, please do not request the second code. We can only give you one code. So what I think, uh, students don't recognize here is that it's not that, you know, we're just waiving this for you. It's basically we are paying for you to submit the application. So it's we can, we can do it one program per student, right? So you want to submit one application, we can accommodate that. If you want to submit five applications, we don't have like, funding to support that. So therefore, we cannot give you five codes. That's what I'm trying to say when I say be mindful of which program you're requesting it for. And um, if you are in doubt, then take some time, uh, either schedule a meeting to request uh, a candidacy evaluation and discuss your profile, or you um, think about it, introspect before you submit the application. And if you choose to submit the two programs, that's fine. You can use the code for one program and then you pay for the other program. $75 non-refundable application fee. Okay, thank you so much, Sri. So I will now go to the last couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, a participant is asking if computer science uh, graduate students can be accepted in uh, these programs offered by Whitman. It depends on which program you are applying for. So somebody with computer science background applying for MS and finance, probably not because we do have uh, prerequisite courses that you have to complete. So again, you'll have to go back to the website and review the program requirements. If there are prerequisites, then you would have to complete those. Without those, we may not be able to take you into the program. Um, if you are applying for a program that does not have prerequisites, sure, we will consider you like any other candidate. It is not specific that you should have background in business in order to apply to B-School, but um, it would, it would uh, help us recognize and understand what is your interest. So somebody who has had a background and training, education background and professional background and training in, let's say, um, a technology related field, right? Like computer science or, or uh, analytics and suddenly wants to apply for an MS in accounting. Okay, hold up, what's happening? <laughs> Are you trying to pivot? Is your interest changed? Are you wanting to learn something else? Like what is the deal here? Help us understand. That's not to say you cannot apply, but we have to understand with the prerequisites where you fit in. So, so just be mindful of that. Thank you so much, Tree. Um, so a participant is, is asking if you accept credits from a different university. Ah, uh, complicated question. Cannot be a short answer. So, okay, short answer is maybe. Uh, long answer is will be evaluated. We can only accept up to six credits, so not too many. And it has to be with... Uh, certain preconditions, again, have to be met. Uh, you have to have earned the credits at the business school accredited by AACSB with a degree, I'm sorry, with a grade of B and higher. So um, it would become more of uh, a scenario where that doesn't come at the time of your application stage. It actually comes when you've been admitted into the program and you're working with your academic advisor to determine your credits. So don't worry about it at the stage of application. Thank you so much, Sri. And um, we have a few more questions, but unfortunately the time has run out. So I would like to ask you if you can pop in the chat your um, email and a link where prospective applicants can see the entire academic offering. 
um, at Whitman. And while you do that, I will remind participants that, of course, they will get the recording of this event and that they have uh, the link to request the certificate of attendance by Doc City for this event. Uh, I saw that quite a few of you have already uh, done that. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, also, I would like to thank all participants for joining us for tonight's event, especially under the uh, current circumstances. And uh, as I'm sure all of you know, um, the global situation is, is a bit chaotic at the moment. And we do want to express our gratitude for those who are connecting from, you know, afflicted um, uh, and, um, you know, areas that are in conflict at the moment. And thank you so much for that. In the meantime, Sri has uh, popped her Calendly link. I will pop that in the chat as well. So you can reach out to her also by her email. And of course, you will get all this information uh, via email in, um, with the recording of the event. Thank you so much for connecting for tonight tonight's webinar with uh, Syracuse University's Whitman School of Management. Uh, it was my pleasure to moderate this webinar. And of, of course, I'm really grateful for Sri uh, for being with us tonight. Thank you so much. And thanks so much for having me. And I look forward to, uh, you know, doing more such webinars with uh, Doc City and New Linea, but also I'm looking forward to the attendees. Uh, please do reach out if you have questions. But again, as I said, please take a moment to review the website. All of your generic questions are answered there. So it doesn't have to just come from me specifically, but when you read it, I'm telling you the same thing. So, so don't doubt yourself when you see it on the website that something is optional. Yes, the website is updated. And so what you see over there is actually uh, up to date as well. So, thank you so much, yeah. Tree. And once again, thank, thank you to all of those who stuck with yeah. us till the end. Uh, I hope you all stay safe and that you will have a good day or evening according to where you are connecting from. And of course, see you to the next event with Syracuse University's Women's School of Management. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.